Hey guys, welcome back to another Procreate tutorial. Today we're going to be going over how to create your own plan for decorating your own cookies, such as this one that I have here. And taking that plan and turning it into your work of art cookies. This is a great tutorial for anyone who wants to be able to visualize what they're going to plan play with colors, play with shapes. It's going to go over um, a whole bunch of different techniques and tools for you to use and how to apply them to all of your cookie sets. So the first thing that I have here is I just have a basic eight and a half by 11 piece of um, paper or canvas, I should say. So the first step that we're going to do is we're going to create a grid. So we're going to go up to our actions canvas drawing guide so we want to have this measured to exactly eight and a half by 11 so you're just going to expand it here until you get eight and a half by 11 there we go and then you hit done okay now the reason we do this is because when we go and pick out what shapes we want to use and which cutters and designs we want to use, we can use this as a guide to determine what size we're going to need, whether we're going to need um, three inch, three and a half inch, four inch, whether you're going for bigger sizes, smaller sizes, this will help so you can fit everything together to see which works best. So the best way to do this is you can go to your favorite cookie cutter website. Of course, I've chosen mine. Um, now make sure you obviously purchase the cutter designs first prior to doing this, but you can take and save the images that you have that you're wanting to use and you can import them straight into your canvas. So we're going to do that now. So the first one we're going to start off with is this cute little teddy. So in order for me to be able to um, use this best, there's a couple different ways that we can do this. So first up, you can, the one thing that I like is when you import an image, you import an image, you can still see the grid. So my cutters are sized by the longest so, um, width. So if let's start with a three and a half, which is usually the standard size. So you're just going to count one, two, three point five square. So that's pretty much three and a half inches right there. So in order to remove this background, we're going to go up here to the selection tool. And you want to make sure that it's set on automatic. And you're just going to tap. Now sometimes, let's say for instance, I have um, if you notice this blue bar up at the top, it shows the threshold. If I have it way down, we'll show you what happens. See, you don't get very much that's selected. So if we hit clear and we want to have that turned up, clear again, then you get all the way around. Don't worry about that down there. That's easy to remove. Now, once you have that selected, a little tip that we're going to do, you're going to take three fingers and you're going to gently swipe down and this little menu pops up. And from there, you're just going to hit cut, and there you go. Now, this part is easy. Once you have that, you can just remove that there. Now, if we want to go ahead and remove that blue border, you're just going to do the same exact thing. This time, I'm going to turn it up a little bit more, I think. And same idea. Swipe, cut. Now, you're still left with that little bit. If you want to get really fussy, you can go around and erase all of that. Just be careful not to erase any other parts of the image or else you'll have problems later. So that I find is the easiest way to remove everything around it. Another way is once you import that, you can create a new layer and we're gonna click on the end right here of the bear and we're gonna turn the opacity down to make it really transparent. So on your new layer, you can go in and trace, trace around the image all the way around if you wanted to do that as well. And then you could just delete the original image. I like this way better. 
but some people have some problems with select with the selection tool, so both ways are an option. So there we go. So let's just confirm. So we know that this guy, because we counted the squares, is approximately three and a half inches. So we're gonna leave him there. And now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do that with all the other images. Okay, so here's a handful of designs that we have that we want to make into our baby shower cookies for our set. Now the good thing when you import each, each photo, it puts each one of them in an individual layer. So we can rescale each and every one of them. So for instance, I'm thinking this feather garland might actually be a touch too big at this size. So I'm gonna scale it down a bit. So I'm thinking he might be better about a three inch size cutter. And then I can move this guy over. Like so. And there. So there's our cutters. So from there, we want to determine the colors that we're going to use. So this is a great time if you have, if somebody sends you an invitation or um, any type of specific colors that a customer really wants put in their set, you can import that image and use those colors as well. So for, in, for example, let's input, let's, look, let's use the original image that I had made. I'm gonna move him to the top. Okay, so this is the image that I had already created. So let's say this is somebody's invitation that they had sent to you. You can pull each and every one of these colors. So first thing that you're gonna do is you wanna make sure you're at the top and you wanna make a new layer. From here, let's select this brown. So you wanna zoom in, you're just gonna tap down till the eyedropper tool pops up and now you have that color selected and make sure you're in that new layer and you're just gonna make a circle right there and then same idea next one you want to pull all the colors that you can let's go with that dark brown don't worry if it overlaps any of these images because it's in a different layer we can move it after so obviously there's a white now when I'm working with white I'm going to show you here in a minute obviously you can't see it so if I have a set that has a lot of white I do what you see in the back here and I make the background a different color. So you're gonna go to your layers and down here at background color, if you just click on it, you can change it to any color. So I'm gonna make it a really light gray and that way I can see the white a lot better. So that's really helpful as well. Now for the set, the customer also wanted gold highlight done. So I just picked whatever color I could get closest to gold and then I knew that I would be using that color as gold highlight in my actual cookies that I had done. So there, so now we took all the main colors from the image that we wanted and we now put them into our canvas. So we can go ahead and delete that image or if you wanna keep it for reference, you can just hide it and uncheck it. I will leave it for now, but I'm gonna put it at the bottom. Okay. So now we have our colors. So what I'm going to do, I like to put them right in the middle so I can access them. So I'm gonna take and move things around a little bit. So I'm gonna move this guy and you wanna be careful, you don't wanna change the sizing of them. Remember, cause we scaled everything so that we knew what sizes we were going to work with. So I'm just gonna move things a little bit 
And I'm going to rearrange so that everything fits nicely on the canvas. Okay, so now if I take these colors, they should fit right in the middle, just like so. Okay, so now comes the fun part. So now we want to take these colors and we want to change the color of all of our images. So let's start with the teddy bear first. Okay, so make sure you're on the bear layer. Now you're going to select the main color that you want to use. So I'm going to start with this light brown. So again, you just want to press down until you get that eyedropper tool that pops up. And you're going to go back up to your selection tool. We're going to be using this tool for most of the set. Again, make sure it's on automatic, but now you want to select color fill because now every section that you clip on, click on, it's going to change the color. Every section. Now, don't worry if you mess up and accidentally click something else, take two fingers and double tap and it'll remo remove it. Now let's say this is a little bit darker than I want. So let's clear it. So because we're already on this color, I'm gonna take and I'm gonna go just a little bit lighter and I'm gonna see what that looks like. And I like the looks of that a lot better. So now we wanna go and we're gonna change this color to this color. So then that way all of our cookies are going to match. So go make sure you go back up to your color section, hit that selection tool and just tap on that one. Now we've changed that color. Okay. So from here, I did not end up coloring the ears. So they ended up staying brown. So we're going to color over those. And I did the paws or the pads of the paws white. Just like that and then the bow was gold and I'm going to show you in a little bit how to add some texture to that gold like I did here okay so let's go ahead and do that so you're gonna go up to your layers and make sure you're selecting the bear in your selection tool now we want to turn off the color fill and you're going to select all the sections that you want to have that gold shimmery effect on and then hit copy and paste. So now those are in its own layer. Okay. Now hit the plus sign and we're going to make a new layer. Now procreate automatically comes with this brush. If you go down to luminance and the glimmer and you can pick, I usually pick a lighter color. And you're just going to kind of play around with the size, see what you like, play around with the colors until you find something that you like. Okay, now when we hit clipping mask, it attaches itself to that image. And then you can merge down and combine it back with the original image. So now everyone is combined just like that. Okay. Now from here, we're going to add a splotching texture. You can kind of see um, a little bit of texture to it. So that way I knew that I wanted to add a uh, dry brush texture to the cookie when I was actually making them. So using the same thing we did before, we're going to select all the areas that we want to have that texture on it. And we're going to do the same thing and we're just going to hit copy and paste. You don't have to be super specific as long as you know which ones you're doing. Same thing, make a new layer. And this time we're going, going to select that brown and go a little bit darker. Okay, now after you're on that new layer, you're going to go into the charcoal section and the carbon stick. Or you can play around with a few different ones as well. I really like the effect of this one. I have the opacity turn down a little bit and you're just going to go back and forth and you can kind of see the texture building up there again it doesn't have 
to be perfect. It just gives you an idea so that I know for later on. And then same thing, hit clipping mask, and there you go. And then you can combine everything down. There we go, our bear is done. So now that he's done, I'm gonna hide this and you can move on to the next and you can do it with all your different cutters. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Now I'm going to show you guys something when you get to ones with writing on it. So if I go ahead, I'll show you now. If I go ahead and I change this to white, it's going to take everything. Okay. And even if it doesn't, if I try to go back in now and select the writing, the colors are now almost identical, so it's not going to pick up the differences. So I'm going to show you what I do. So if we, there we go. So you're going to make sure you're on the selection tool, turn off the color fill, and you're going to take the writing and select it and copy and paste that. So that is in a completely separate layer, so we can color that a different color later on. Now you can go back in and you can do your coloring and your texture to this guy. Okay, so now in this one, I knew I wanted the writing on top to also be white, but of course in the planning here if I do that you can't see it so I'm going to show you a trick for that if you're doing um, two colors the same on top of each other so you're going to take your layer with the writing and you're going to swipe over and hit duplicate on the bottom layer where you want to color this all black so you're going to alpha lock choose black and fill layer now you want to un alpha lock that okay you're going to go up here to the magic wand and you're going to hit the Gaussian Blur. And you're just going to ever so slightly, you, lightly, you only want a little bit, blur it in there. If you want it to be darker, you can duplicate it. And the more times you duplicate it, the darker it's going to get. So now you can see an outline of it so you know where your writing is. And then you can merge down. But still leave it in a separate layer until you do all of your textures that you want to the layer behind it. And again, if you're doing white, go a little bit gray with your texture. That way you can see it. Then you can combine everything down and there you go. I'm gonna keep going with the other ones now. Okay, now we have the textures, we have the colors, we have the shapes. Now we are going to go in and we're gonna add 
text. So if you look at my original image, I have text added to some of the cookies. I have text added so that I know what I'm going to do to those cookies, um, whether it's texture, um, different colors, adding gold. You can use text for lots of different things. So we're going to go, so on this one, I knew that I wanted it again to be in gold. So let's select our color. And you're gonna go in and add text. There we go. And then you can change the style that you want. I want the lines a little bit closer together. And there you go, we're gonna put it right there. Now, because it's hard to see in the image, we're gonna do the same thing that we did before. And we're going to change the bottom layer to black. Now, once you go up here and do this, it's gonna make it pop a lot more. There we go. And you can combine those down. And I'm gonna bring it all the way down so that it's with the letter board and combine those. Another thing you can also do if you hit add new layer, you can go in or sketching and you can hit the pencil and you can just write. So let's say I wanted write splotching effect. And you can just handwrite it right in there. If you're someone that does better just being able to write, or we can do what I did before. Hope I can spell. And again, I really like this writing, but I want the layers or the lines to be closer together. So it takes up less space in my image. Now, if you want to draw an arrow, it has to be on a separate layer than the text that you just added. There we go. And then we can go ahead and add this one to the canvas. I like to add the writing where I have my colors. I'm going to go in with the gold again. There we go. So there's our basic plan for our cookie set. So as, as, as soon as you're happy with it, your sizes, your colors, everything's good. We're gonna go up and you're gonna hit share and save as a J, JPEG and hit save image. And there you go. Now you can use that image to create your cookie cutters and use as a reference.